Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Regional Admission Counselors of California College Fair. I'd like to thank you all for joining us here today. Just a few housekeeping items before we do get started. There's a Q&A button located at the bottom of your screen, which you can use to ask questions to our presenters at any time. If you do have a question for a specific college, make sure to mention them within your question. Your camera and microphone are turned off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. And this is also just one of many sessions happening over the next three hours. So definitely go check some more out at, right after this. This presentation is also being recorded and will be, be available within about a week at the same site where you registered. Now, without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to our first institution, which is Baylor University. Hi, everybody. I am gonna get started here. My name is Amira Alvarado and I'm the admissions counselor for Baylor. Um, university, which is a private um, Christian university located in Waco, Texas. We, um, sorry, just switching over. Um, we, um, Waco is about an hour and a half between Dallas and Austin, and Waco is definitely not a huge city, but it is a great college town. There's um, a great college field. It's a great complement to what Baylor offers as a university. There's a lake um, in downtown, or not in downtown Waco. There's a lake in Waco. There's a river next to campus where students go paddle boating and kayaking. There's a park further down the river with hiking and running trails. Um, there is um, a downtown area with shops and restaurants. Uh, there is even an in and out right across from campus. So you'll have that taste from home if you're from California. Baylor has about 14,000 students. So we are a good mid-sized university, um, but our average class size is 26 and our student factor ratio is 14 to one. So you have the benefits of a large school with great academics, sports traditions, um, fun things to get involved in, but still that smaller classroom experience, professors that know you, you're not just a number in a classroom. We have over 140 majors and they are designed for students to graduate in four years, they're not impacted, um, and you are able to do secondary majors, minors, and um, we have a lot of great pre-health programs along the way. Some of our top programs are our business program. Our students start as pre-business, so you have time to figure out what area you want to major in. At the end of your sophomore year, that's when you would declare your major. Um, we have a really strong entrepreneurship program. We have a five-year dual degree accounting program. Our students are able to do internships. I think every business degree has an internship built into them. Don't be... Um, turned off by Waco not being a huge city. Our students are very successful with internship opportunities. Um, some students do them over the summer as well. Our pre-med program is also really strong. Um, our students have opportunities to shadow and do um, work in the local hospitals. You're not competing with other students from other schools. Um, and our students who go through our committee process have a 72% acceptance rate into med school, which is about double the national average. We also have a really strong pre-law program, um, nursing, education, really a little bit of everything. Our students within graduating, um, within three months of graduating, 86% of our students are either working or in grad school. For a lot of our programs, it does go up to 100%. Um, you'll have a lot of help along the way with resume writing workshops, mock interviews, um, job fairs, internship fairs, all those kinds of things. And of course, um, even help after you graduate with access to database, job databases, and all that kind of thing. Um, research is important, um, and students are able to do that starting from freshman year. It's not just limited to grad students. And so you can do your own research or work alongside professors as well. We also have a really strong honors program. So you can kind of be in a smaller setting within the larger university. Um, and um, we have two programs in that area where you that work alongside your major and then two majors within the honors college as well. We are, I mentioned in the beginning, we are a Christian university, but uh, we, and it's very important to who we are and kind of how we do everything, but we are not a Bible college, so we do have students from all different backgrounds. Um, and um, all of our students take two courses, Christian scripture and Christian heritage and two semesters of chapel. Beyond that, there's lots to get involved in, but those are the, on, the only requirements. Um, diversity and inclusion is something that of course is, is very important to us and something that we are working on. Right now, about 38% of our students do come from diverse backgrounds. Um, and so we have ways for, they, for them to get connected and um, to be with other students. And then we also do events uh, campus-wide to kind of share culture as well. We have over 330 student organizations organization, so there's definitely a lot to get involved in. Traditions are really big. Baylor dates back to 1845, so we're the oldest university in Texas and actually the oldest university um, or older than Texas, so that's kind of fun to say. Um, and some of our favorite traditions are the Baylor line, where students get a bright gold jersey with your nickname and class you're on back, and then before every home game, you run across the football field um, and form a tunnel for the coaches and team to run through, and um, then get to sit right on the 50-yard line behind the opposing team to kind of cheer them on. Um, Dr. Pepper was invented in Waco, so every Tuesday we have free Dr. Pepper 
upper floats for our students as just kind of a way to take a break from classes. And then we do have two live bears that live on campus. They live in a zoo and our students are actually the caretakers of the bears. So that's a really neat opportunity to have on your resume as well. Um, just some things to be thinking about for the future. Um, our application is free and we are on the Common App. We are test optional for this year and the next year as well. So if you're able to submit a test score, great. If not, that's okay too. If you're not sure what to do, just reach out. I'd be happy to help you with that. Um, and then of course you'll wanna submit all the optional items as well. Um, over 90% of our students do receive some type of financial aid. Um, we do have our merit scholarships, for which are automatically awarded. They're based off of just your GPA. And then we um, also have need-based aid available. So you do need to submit the FAFSA and the CSS profile um, in order to be reviewed for need-based aid. We also have other opportunities for high achieving students um, to earn a full tuition scholarship, different scholarships um, ranging from $3,000 to a full ride. So definitely something to keep an eye out on um, over the summer when the application opens in August. And then um, I know that we are still in the end, hopefully the tail end of the pandemic, but we do have tours available if you're able to come to visit campus. Um, we do have limited tours, so just reach out and we can get you scheduled for that. Um, in the meantime, sick and bears, and now I will turn it over to Susan from New Mexico State. New Mexico University, sorry. Thank you, Baylor, for that presentation. Up next, we do have New Mexico State University. Button up there. I was having a little trouble. My mute button was sticking. But um, hi, everyone. I'm Susan Metzler with New Mexico State University. Um, I'm an admissions advisor. I'm actually based in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona, but I work with um, all students in the state of California. So I'm gonna share my screen. There we go, okay. Um, New Mexico State University is located in Las Cruces, New Mexico. We are the land grant university of New Mexico. We were established in 1888, which is also before um, New Mexico actually became a state. We were still a, a territory. Up until 1960, we were known as New Mexico A&M because we originally started as an agriculture and mechanical, which is engineering college. And those are our two original colleges, but we have so many other um, majors and opportunities that we did officially change the name back in 1960 to New Mexico State University. Um, in, in addition to being the land grant University of New Mexico, we're also a NASA space grant and a Hispanic serving institution. As you can see from this picture, even though we are located in the desert, we have a very green campus. We're in the Rio Grande Valley, so it's a very large agricultural area, and we have lots of grass, trees, um, not what people think typically of the desert, although we do have over 300 days of sunshine. This is our location. Our closest major city is El Paso, Texas. It is only 45 minutes away from us. We do have a, a shuttle that will take students to and from the airport in El Paso if they decide they want to fly to campus, but first-year students can have cars on campus. Um, we are right off the I-10. We are about um, 10 hours from San Diego, 11 hours plus from Los Angeles, depending on traffic. Um, Las Cruces, New Mexico is the large, second largest city in the state of New Mexico, but New Mexico cities are a little bit smaller. So even though we're the second largest, we only have a population of about 100,000. We are a true college town. For the third year in a row, we were named the best college town in New Mexico. And I think one of the reasons is because we have such a great relationship with the city of Las Cruces. We are um, very involved with them and they're involved with us. So many people in Las Cruces either went to New Mexico State or work at New Mexico State. Um, so a lot of things in the town revolve around the university. Um, we have lots of outdoor festivals. We have a film festival, but the thing that the area is really known for uh, is the outdoors. We're right up against the Oregon mountains with lots of mountain biking, hiking, um, camping, trail riding all kinds of fun things to do in the outdoors. Okay, um, we do not have any impacted majors at New Mexico State. Um, freshmen can have cars on campus, that is not a problem. We're also part of the WE, which is the Western Undergraduate Exchange. The discount is automatic. So if you're a resident of California, you automatically will receive the WE discount. We do have students from all 50 states, 89 countries. We have over 200 student clubs and organizations, including Greek Life. Um, we have just over 14,000 students on campus. So we're an awesome medium-sized university, um, big enough that you have lots of opportunities, but small enough that when you're walking around campus or in classes, you see people that you know. 
Um, we, we are part of the Western Athletic Conference, so we are Division I, and our average class size is only 27. So we do have those smaller class sizes, which are it's so important when you're in college. You get to know your faculty members and you also get to know your fellow classmates. Um, we have a very affordable education. It's one of the reasons I think that so many students from California come to New Mexico State is because they automatically receive the Western Undergraduate Exchange tuition discount. But then something that we do that's a little bit different is you can also stack merit scholarships on top of the discount. And of course, you know, a lot of our students receive financial aid. So it can be a really great way for a student to go to school out of state and graduate in four years without a lot of debt. Um, we do have six academic colleges. We have our College of Agriculture, Consumer and Environmental Sciences, Arts and Sciences, Business, Education, Engineering, um, College of Health and Social Services, and we have the Conroy Honors College. Some really popular majors for California um, students, uh, kinesiology, um, all of our agriculture programs, aerospace engineering, nursing, computer science, and we also have a creative media institute that is digital filmmaking and animation, and that's really popular too. We are one of the few um, schools in the country that has a PGA golf management program, and we also have an osteopathic medicine medical pathway program for someone who does eventually want to go to medical school um, and be a DO. So we have over 200 student clubs and organizations, all different kinds, including, including Greek life. So basically you can become involved in anything that you would like because there's a club for you. Um, we are part of the Western Athletic Conference. These are D1 sports teams. Um, all students get free tickets to all the games so you don't have to purchase those separately. And we do love to go out and support our Aggies. This is my information. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me. I will put my email address in the chat and I hope to see you all soon in person. Thank you, New Mexico, for that presentation. Up next, we have Oregon State University. Hi folks, so happy to be here with you all tonight. My, ooh, is my screen sharing? You were all set to go. Okay, thank you so much for that. Um, so hi everyone, my name is Delta. My pronouns are they, them. I am one of our California admissions advisors. So I'll send our contact through after I finish presenting, but just know that I am your point of contact coming from Southern California and we are happy to help you out if you have any questions. Um, OSU is a type of institution that is out there. So I'd like to start with just our mentality as a university. Um, with uh, two campuses and 11 academic colleges, we provide a number of experiential learning opportunities for our students, also known as out of the classroom learning, right? So that might be through undergraduate research, which we have a whole office to help navigate students through that process. It might be through travel abroad, where we are managing over 200 programs in over 70 countries, or it might just be through your classes itself. Um, we are, um, an institution that believes in, like I say, getting students out there. Um, so the background of the slide is actually a really great example. This is a student that's working on our coastal campus called the Hatfield Marine Science Center and an introductory course to marine biology. So there's no shortage of out there experiences for our students. Um, when it comes to which majors that applies to, that really does exist across the board for us. So we do have over 200 academic programs with zero impacted majors. So that means that there are no additional admissions requirements for any of our programs. Once you're admitted, you're admitted to all of our majors at OSU. Our academic colleges live on the right side of the screen there. So you can start to see the kind of um, academic areas that we offer for students. Um, with the most popular, I would say, being our uh, College of Engineering. So we do have about one third of our students coming in for engineering majors and 15 majors to choose from, including construction management, uh, engineering, architecture engineering, forestry engineering, and a number of others as well. Our College of Business is also very popular. We have a number of programs there, you know, also, including finance, accounting, family business, uh, digital marketing, with a first year immersive program for students um, called Be Engaged. So you'll actually be creating or supporting a real world business as first year students at OSU and taking those skills throughout the rest of your time um, with us at Beaver Nation. And then I would also say our pre-professional studies are also very popular. So we do offer pre-physical therapy, pre uh, med, pre, uh, animal sciences and veterinary sciences. And we are the only graduate college of veterinary medicine in the state of Oregon. So if you're looking to do veterinary sciences, you can do that all the way through with us. 
Um, if you're the kind of student who isn't quite sure yet, we got you covered there as well. We have a program called University Exploratory Studies, where you can be in this guided program for about a year and a half before having to select your home major. So I know that's just a little snippet of our majors. Definitely make sure to check out more of our programs online. Um, and just to kind of share some of the top programs that we are offering, we do have some that are nationally and internationally known. So we are number three for oceanography in the world, number eight for marine biology and freshwater sciences. A lot of that from the work coming from our coastal campus at Hatfield. And we're also number four for robotics in the United States. This is more of a graduate level, but our undergrads are still gleaning from all the excitement with that, especially with all the robots that we have on campus. So we actually have delivery robots right now going around to deliver food to increase social distancing. All of that fun stuff really starts at our main campus in Corvallis, Oregon. Corvallis is a beautiful college town located 90 minutes south of Portland, right in the heart of the Willamette Valley. Uh, on that campus, there's lots going on as we have just over 26,000 students and over 400 clubs and organizations. Um, so if you want to get into Greek life, you could do that. If you want to be involved with an academic club and expand what you're learning in the classroom, uh, you can do that as well. Um, or you can create your own club if you would like to. Uh, we had a student who created one called the Corgi Appreciation Club because she just loved Corgi so much. So lots of opportunities for students for sure. Um, we're also a Division I and Pac-12 institution, so a lot of that good rah-rah school spirit with our athletic facilities on campus. And then we do have support for students off campus, or sorry, we do have support for students out of the classroom, uh, including counseling and psychological services um, and our seven cultural resource centers, which are little homes away from homes, um, including our Pride Center, our Women and Gender Center, our Ina House Native Student Center, and more to support students. So if you're looking to be a BEAV, I wanted to share a little bit of admissions information with you all. Um, we are holistic review school. So that means that you are going to be considered more than just your GPA and your grades. We're really going to look at that essay and other pieces that you're submitting as well. Uh, when it comes to test scores, we are test optional for all considerations. So you are not required to submit either the SAT or the ACT um, to join us at Beaver Nation. That choice is really up to you. And then when it comes to the scholarship side of things, we are automatically considering all students from California for the Western Undergraduate Exchange or the WUI program. Um, that being said, it is a merit-based scholarship, so it is highly competitive to earn the WUI scholarship. Um, you should know a bit more about any scholarships you've received about four to six weeks after you're admitted. Um, feel free to apply to us by our early action deadline of November 1st. Um, and like I said, you're more than welcome to let us know if you have any other questions. And I'll also be putting this in the chat as well as our live virtual event engagements. So with that, I hope you have a great night and go Beavs. Thank you, Oregon, for that presentation. As a reminder for our attendees, if anyone does have questions, definitely don't hesitate to use the Q&A down below. Up next, we have Maryville University. Good evening, everyone. My name is Antonio. I'll be giving you guys a quick presentation. Uh, Maryville University. We are located in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, so depending on what part of California you guys are located, it's anything between a two to three hour flight. Uh, we're a small liberal arts institution, uh, total enrollment of close to 11,000, but our traditional undergraduate population is roughly about 2,900 students. So we're still fairly small within our campus boundaries. We do have all 50 states represented as well as 47 different countries, over 90 degree program opportunities. Uh, we're NCAA division two with over 23 varsity sports. Average class size is 15 and student, student of faculty ratio is actually 14 to one. Classes are usually capped at 25. So you'll be you and 24 other students max in the class. We do have over 100 clubs and organization with over 3,000 events annually and free of charge for our students to participate in. Uh, here's the list of our top program, given the fact that we do have over 90 degree program opportunities, but nursing, uh, freshman direct entry, uh, physical therapy, freshman direct entry is a doctoral program. Uh, it's a six and a half year program. Occupational therapy is a master's program and it's freshman direct entry opportunity as well, as well as speech language therapy, which is also another freshman direct entry program. We do have cybersecurity in our campus with a cybersecurity fusion center in our campus in which you have the opportunity to start working as early as freshman year and doing work pro bono. Uh, sports business management is one of 25 uh, sports business programs are actually housed in the uh, business 
school in the nation. And then we just added this year computer science, which would include artificial intelligence, user experience, data science, software development, as well as blockchain. Uh, with that said, we are we are an Apple Distinguished School, um, which means that 100% of our traditional undergraduate students will receive an iPad as well as an Apple Pencil. It is yours to keep whenever you guys graduate. That comes preloaded with over 200 apps. Uh, but we also have a Mirable Cloud that otherwise you will be able to download or otherwise you will actually pay uh, to download apps to your uh, iPad, but they're free of charge. 100% uh, of our classrooms are active learning ecosystem, which it means uh, they're all Apple certified classrooms in which you'll have the opportunity to take over the screen, uh, get live feedback from your professor as well as interact with your classmates. Uh, with that said, 97.8% uh, of the students who graduate from our institution are either enrolled back in grad school, full-time, part-time job within six months of graduating. Uh, which is actually 10% higher than the national average, which is a good indicator that we're preparing our students well for the workforce once they're getting ready to graduate. Uh, with that said, brings us up to tuition. Uh, we have froze tuition for the past five years. This past year, we actually took a dip in tuition. We lower our tuition by 5%, and we're expected to lower our tuition 20% in the next four to five years, uh, which brings us up to tuition, which is $24,000 Six hundred, or sorry, twenty four seven sixty six. Uh, but our total cost is thirty seven thousand four hundred and sixty six, including room and board and the fees. Uh, books are already included in tuition, so you don't have to worry about uh, purchasing books. Uh, books that cannot be downloaded to your tablet, which is roughly about thirty percent of those books, you can just go pick them up at the bookstore and return them at the end of the semester. Uh, and ninety three percent of our students receive some form of financial aid. And last year, we actually awarded fifty three million dollars in financial aid. Uh, with that said, uh, we have our list of automatic scholarships, which range from 9,000 all the way up to 14,000. We're test optional. Uh, so as long as you meet one of the two criteria, so you'll actually receive the scholarship in the automatic tab. Uh, and then we have over 200 uh, competitive scholarships that range anything from 500 all the way up to full tuition, full room and board. Uh, we also have first robotics, athletic scholarships. Those may vary depending on the sport. Uh, club and intramural sports scholarships as well. And then for California students, we have a $5,000 grant that is automatic. Um, and if you guys have any questions, you can always refer to maryboldedu slash scholarships. Uh, with that said, like I mentioned before, we're test optional. We're par part of the Common App as well as Coalition. Uh, of course, part of your application will be completing the online application, whether it be through Common App or Coalition, and then submitting your transcripts. We do holistic review. Uh, some specific program will have um, letters of uh, rec or recommendations required, so you might as well just double check those before you actually complete and submit your application. Uh, here's a short 30 second video. Uh, we're hosting visits on campus, so if you guys uh, happen to stumble across and want to come visit us, we're more than happy to host you guys. We also have a sneak peek Wednesday in which every uh, almost every Wednesday uh, we have, uh, whether it be a faculty or admissions counselors talking to you about academic programs or on campus events and whatnot. Maryville Live Series is a webcast in which we have students actually talk about their experience on campus as well. And here's Dennis Jones' contact information. He's our regional uh, representative in the, uh, he lives actually in Oakland. If you guys have any questions, feel free to contact them, all right? Thank you, guys. Thank you, Maryville, for that presentation. Up next, we have Dixie State University. Perfect. All right, hello, everyone. My name is Derek Vergara, and I'll be with Dixie State University today. So Dixie State University, we're located in St. George, Utah. Now, if you've never heard of us, but you're from Southern California, we're about six hours away. If you've been to Las Vegas, just an hour and a half north of that. You can see on the left there um, where St. George is based on the Utah map. So the very corner of St. George. It's a gorgeous place to be. 
A lot of times people think um, freezing cold, not the case. We have beautiful weather, more of a desert climate. You can see by that photo kind of what to expect um, when you attend DC State and it's gonna be a beautiful place. Um, we do have, uh, or we are a public university. Um, so a lot of times students will compare us to like a Cal State school, um, but specifically in Utah. We are 100% acceptance rate. I know that sounds very strange to um, anyone coming from out of state. Usually used to hearing you need a certain GPA or SAT score to get into the school. Um, meanwhile, at Dixie State, we've been associated with the Utah as the state as being 100% acceptance, meaning any student who applies, we will accept you. Um, now we do offer scholarships and those are GPA based. And so you'll still wanna get good grades so you can get those scholarships to make us really affordable. We are the most affordable university in Utah. We are the trailblazers. We have about 12,000 students on campus. We're a growing university. Um, you can see right there, this is 11,000, but we've just been growing. And that was an estimate this past year and we hit over 12,000. So more and more students are choosing to come here. We do have a 21% minority rate, making us the most diverse university in Utah with 43 um, countries represented from international students as well. Um, we are a very safe campus, third safest in the whole US. So just know if you will be going to an out-of-state school, you'll also be very safe there. 300 days of sunshine, um, as I mentioned, it's very much of a desert climate, similar to what you might expect in Southern California. Uh, zero inches of annual snowfall. Um, so again, you don't have to expect having to deal with that snow, but if you wanna to go to the mountains or anything like that, um, those are close by as well. Um, and we've also been voted best city in Utah. So people are loving being in St. George. We do have a wide range of academics that you can go into, whether it's business, um, engineering, electrical engineering, mechanical, nursing, um, lots of different options for you to go into. We also offer master degrees and we'll be adding a PhD in occupational therapy here as well very soon. So if there's a program specifically that you wanna go into, let me know and I could talk about that one more in details. This is a picture of one of our brand new buildings. It's a human performance center um, and there students can go there and work out. There's a full size gym, Olympic size pool, um, a rock climbing wall that's three stories tall and a bunch of other that fun stuff you might go and do, but also houses our exercise science program. So if you wanna go and exercise science, physical therapy, um, you'll have all of your classes in there. And then you go from the classroom um, straight over to the rock, climb, rock climbing wall to kind of get that hands-on learning. Uh, we call it active learning, active life that we want you to experience. Average classroom size is only about 20 students. And so you get to know your professors, they'll know you by name um, and you'll be able to work with them one-on-one. -on -one. Now Utah is all um, know, well known about its outdoor recreation activities. So if you wanna go kayaking, biking, rock climbing, any of the things, we have those options um, for you. Zion National Park, super close by. Uh, definitely take advantage of any of these opportunities if you want to go outdoors. And if there's something like mountain biking that you really want to get into but never done before, we do offer classes as well that'll teach you how to do those different activities um, that you can enjoy. So one of the great benefits of Utah is being able to get outdoors and have fun with your friends. Uh, we do have D1 athletics, so including a football team. So if you want to go to any kind of sporting event, you do have those options for you. That was huge for me when I was looking at different colleges. I really enjoyed um, my football games in high school and I want to enjoy those as well. So go to the tailgates, get involved on campus, um, whether it's playing the sport or just going as a participant, you do have those options for you. Now, I highly recommend um, taking a tour on campus. We do offer uh, tours right now. If you want to go on campus and take one, we have those options for you. Um, a lot of times if they attend the campus tour, students are really excited about attending DSU because it'll kind of take them um, by surprise. As far as admissions go, you, in the fall, if you are a junior right now, um, you would apply. If you're a senior right now, we are still accepting applications. You just go to apply.dixie.edu, pay the $35 application fee, and turn in your high school transcript. Um, at that point, we will can admit you. We're not requiring the ACT, SAT scores um, as of this year for your admission. And then we do offer a wide range of scholarships, including um, the WE waiver. So you can see our cost and tuition breakdown. As I mentioned earlier, we are the most affordable university in Utah. Uh, tuition is about $14,000 for the year. But if you get the WU waiver, you can achieve that by having a 2.5 unweighted GPA. That'll bring down your tuition. You can see there are 3618 uh, for the semester, about $7,000 for the year. And then housing and food in Utah, also very affordable, about $7,000 um, for the year as well. And so that'll bring to your total about $15,000 for the year between housing, food, fees, and tuition. Um, we do offer even better scholarships on top of that. So if you have a 3.25, uh, that'll be a full merit scholarship. That'll bring down your tuition about $6,000 a year. And yeah, more scholarships go up on top of that. 
Um, but ultimately, that will essentially conclude my presentation. If you have more questions about Dixie State, cost, activities, anything like that, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, again, my name is Derek, and go Trailblazers. Thank you, Dixie State, for that presentation. Our final institution for this session is Mississippi State University. Thank you. And good evening, everyone. My name is Hilda Carroll. I'm an admissions counselor for Mississippi State University. Mississippi State is located in Starkville, Mississippi. So that's about two hours south of Memphis and two hours west of Birmingham. So you've got those major airports right there. But we also do have a regional airport 30 minutes from campus. So while we are far away, if you do want to come visit, plenty of ways to get around. Speaking of visiting, we do have um, virtual visits and on-campus visits as well. So if you want to come check out our gorgeous campus, there's a couple ways to do it. Mississippi State University was founded in 1878 as Mississippi A&M, so agriculture and mechanic, and we've grown tremendously since. We've got 22,000 Bulldogs on our campus, but we've got a 20 to 1 student to faculty ratio, so that means that in the classroom, it never feels like you're one of 22,000, but when you step into, say, Davis Wade Stadium for some D1 SEC football, you can look around and feel like, wow, the family's huge, so it's a really nice balance there. Like I mentioned, our roots are in agriculture and mechanical but we've grown tremendously since. As you can see right here, we've got eight academic colleges and an honors college as well. We are known for our STEM program, specifically engineering. We're top 30 in the country for engineering, but don't let that scare you away from any of our um, liberal arts majors because those are going to be really great too and have lots of hands-on opportunities. Um, basically, every single one of these academic colleges has nationally ranked programs within them if they're not nationally ranked itself. But the thing that really makes us stand out and really makes us unique is our research. We are an R1 research university, so that is the highest level of research conducted on the university campus. We are top 100 in the country, and our undergraduate students have countless opportunities to get started and really do the thing that they came to Mississippi State to do. What you see on this screen right here is uh, our supercomputer. We have the fourth fastest supercomputer in academia. We're also getting a second supercomputer. So just an example of some of the facilities that are available to our students. But research isn't just STEM-based. And a great example of that is the Center for Entrepreneurial Research and Outreach, which is ranked number six in the world. And basically what the East Center does is help students start their businesses, whether it's helping students come together to put together a business plan or helping them find funding for their business. The East Center is going to do that. And we've had students graduate millionaires. We've had countless student CEOs. So lots of opportunities there. Other cool research that our students are working on um, is, you know, with cybersecurity, they're working directly with the NSA to tackle some of the huge concerns. Um, and it is a program that gives you an NSA certification. So you're really working with the best there. We're also home to a National Center of Excellence for the FAA. So we have the largest unmanned aircraft lab in the country on our campus. So our students are working directly with like Boeing and other major companies and awesome projects, but they're also really writing the rules for drones in the future. So literally shaping the future of that industry as a whole. And another cool project that I wanna mention is through the Center for Advanced Vehicular Studies that's producing the first all electric autonomous SUV. And this is also something that'll be able to do some off-roading stuff. So it's pretty cool and unique in that manner. So these are just some of the research opportunities that you would have as a Mississippi State Bulldog. Um, it's tough to talk about the experience at Mississippi State without talking about the student life experience. So we are the most diverse school in the SEC. We've got 50 countries and uh, 50 states and all and 80 countries represented. So you're gonna see a little bit of everything and you're gonna broaden your horizons. We have hundreds of student organizations. So there's a bunch of different ways to get involved. We've got an amazing study abroad program that will create something that's unique for you if that's what it takes to get you to go see the world. Um, some pretty cool stuff. And we are an SEC D1 school. So there's always something cool happening within athletics on our campus. It's a really well-rounded experience. We're also in a cute little college 
college town. So everything really is about the university. They're really excited to have us there and they're really supportive. So how do you become a Bulldog? Super simple. We are on Coalition, Common App, in our direct application. We're going to need a $40 application fee, your high school transcript. And if you have test scores, we do want to see them for scholarship purposes. If not, um, then we can go ahead and admit you without them. But if you have them, they can only help you. And because we are an out of state institution, we know it's going to be a little bit more expensive. We don't have the WUI, but we do have a bunch of scholarships to help offset that cost. So if mom or dad served in any branch of the military, we're going to go ahead and waive the out-of-state portion of tuition and give you scholarships on top of that. And if you've got a 3.5 and a 26 on the ACT, you're guaranteed $14,500 a year in scholarships, which is going to bring that cost down to basically in-state tuition. And that's a matrix that's going to range from $8,000 to $23,000 a year. So we've got a bunch of really great opportunities. We've got a lot of money to give you and everybody looks good in maroon and white. So I hope you'll consider Mississippi State. Hail State. Thank you so much to all of our institutions who presented today. We do have a few minutes left. So we do have time for some round robin questionnaire time. All right, so I'm going to have our representatives answer what advice would you give someone going through the college search process and we'll go in presentation order. So we will start with Baylor. Yeah, I think my best advice is to reach out to the admissions counselors at the different schools you're looking at. Um, I know for me personally, I love to connect with my students. We are the Office of Admissions. We want to help you get into our universities. We're not trying to find ways to not let you in. And second, just real quick, I love connecting with parents, but sometimes I wonder if their student even knows they're applying. So parents, it's great to be in touch, but make sure your students are also doing their part as well. New Mexico? Um, I think my advice is that, you know, there's so many different schools in the country. Um, there are over 5,000 accredited schools. Um, and, you know, you have so many options and people think that doing something out of state or going away, it's gonna be more expensive. Some cases that is true, but other cases it, you know, in the long run, it could be less expensive or you could qualify for some great, you know, scholar, scholarships or financial aid. Um, I think a lot of students apply to schools that Maybe their friends are applying to or family members applied to, but your experience is your own. You're an individual. So what's right for everyone else might not be right for you. So just really finding a school that you feel comfortable, um, you know, attending is, is just really important. Oregon State. Yeah, totally. I would say to take advantage of the virtual opportunities that are happening uh, right now. Um, you know, since especially since you're considering out of state institutions, um, it, it's a really great way to get a preview of, you know, what the campus is like or what the academic programs are like, even before you get to campus. So visiting campus is always great, right? We want to get a sense of the feel of the place that you'll be for your undergraduate years, but there are a lot of really awesome virtual opportunities that you can take advantage of now as well. Mary Bell? I would like to echo everything everyone else said before. Um, probably the most important part is asking those questions that you're probably not there to ask. You should ask them um, and let your story know. Like, you know, majority of our schools do holistic reviews, but you're more than a piece of paper. So make sure you connect, like they said, make sure you connect with the counselors and uh, express your interest in the institution. That usually goes a long way as well. Dixie State. Yeah, I'd say um, find a few schools you're interested in, find more information about them, and then narrow it down. And then if you can, um, if you can visit the schools, maybe uh, when uh, you're able to, and uh, take a tour of the campus. A lot of times, that's the biggest reason students will choose a campus because they got a feel for it and they have a better understanding of that university or college. In Mississippi State. So every, I agree with everything everyone said, and I want to add to just keep an open mind because you might fall in love with a school that wasn't even on your radar that you just stumbled upon, and that's totally okay. That's why it's a search process. Just go on with, with an open mind. Thank you everyone for those wonderful pieces of advice. We do have just a few more minutes, so we'll do one more question, and that is going to be, what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? And I'll turn it over to Baylor. Yeah, I mentioned a few in my presentation, but one I didn't mention is Dia del Oso or Day of the Bear. So each spring, students get a day off of classes. They have a huge field, um, field day kind of with events, concerts, 
goat yoga, different things like that. This year they did it virtually. So or last year they had to do it virtually. This year they spread it out over the whole week. So they did things like scavenger hunt, laser tag. Um, and again, just a kind of a break in the middle of the semester to give everybody just a chance to kind of regroup before finals. New Mexico State. Um, I think my favorite tradition is something that's called first year walk. It's when um, just before classes start and all first year students are on campus, they go into our Pan Am Center, which is where our basketball team plays, and they have a big pep rally. And then they, I, I equate it to a parade. They, we have marching band, cheerleaders, our mascot kind of leads them through campus, and people come out of classrooms and offices and kind of stop. They stop and clap, and it's really just a nice way to welcome our students to campus by letting them know they're part of a community, and we're so happy that they're there. Oregon State. I would say mine is uh, similar. Um, in the beginning of the year, we have a welcome week, which is where we welcome our returning and new students to campus for a new academic year. Um, there's a bunch of fun events, such as our annual campus-wide scavenger hunt that we do to help you get familiar with campus. There's activities fairs, um, there's sporting events, um, and then we have some other fun things. Even in the virtual world, we had some really fun like bingo events that happened this year that was hosted by Nicole Byer, which was hilarious and really fun. Um, so welcome week, I would have to say, is top of my list for traditions. Maryville. I like to say similar, our welcome week uh, for our incoming freshmen. They have the opportunity to get their uh, commencement of the class in which they actually ring the bell. Uh, usually you hear the bell ring twice in your college career will be your first and last year by the time you graduate. So that's probably one of my biggest uh, favorite traditions. Dixie State. Yeah, my favorite, we have a whole week dedicated to tr traditions called D-Week. And so every single day, there's a different tradition going on. One of them is to break a world record that goes on. Uh, one of my other favorite events that we do is we have a great race that's been going on for a while. And so it's a team of 10 students or community members. And one of you is roller skating. One of you is biking. Um, one of you is in a mud pit going all around campus in this giant obstacle course race. And then um, the winner kind of gets pride for the entire year. And they're well known for winning the great race. In Mississippi State. Hey Derek, that sounds like a lot of fun. I want to be invited to that. Um, so my favorite tradition at Mississippi State is the cowbell. So we are the only school that's legally allowed by the NCAA to bring in artificial noisemakers. Um, your first cowbell has to be a gift because the legend says that if you buy your first cowbell, then that brings bad luck to the stadium. Um, and we can do that ourselves. Like we don't need help with bad luck sometimes. Um, but it's supposed to be a gift. It's a really fun tradition. And it makes for the loudest stadium in the country because you're never going to be louder than like 80,000 cowbells ringing at once. Those are all so many great options. I want to partake in all of them. <laughs> well, thank you everyone for joining us this evening. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey and we would appreciate any feedback you can provide to us. This is also just one of many sessions. There are two more hours after this, so definitely go check those out. And as I mentioned earlier on, this session was recorded and will be available within about a week at the same site where you registered. Again, thank you for joining us and have a great evening.